Hi everyone, my name is Becky Bodger and I'm a technical analyst at Sequent. This short video is going to hopefully show you some useful tips about working in a database without an undo button. I teach a lot of Oasis Montage courses here at Sequent and one of the biggest questions I get from users is why is there no undo button in a database? And I get it, we all make mistakes and it would be really nice if we had that Control Z safety net, but we don't. And this doesn't have to be a limitation. There are a few tricks you can employ when working in Oasis Montage that will eliminate the need for an undo button altogether. The first is using channel protection. All channels are protected by default on import. You can see in my database there's a black triangle in the corner of each channel header. You can unprotect or protect a single channel by right clicking and clicking protected. You can protect none if you want to make changes to the entire database, or you can protect all. If you're running a script to go through your workflow, you can also add the Chan Protect GX to the bottom of any script, and this will automatically protect all of your output channels created from the script. So in this example, I created a distance and a sample separation, and they're already protected, so I can't accidentally edit them. So now that all your channels are protected, if you actually want to start editing your mag or your altitude channel, for example, you'll need to make a copy. So one way to do that is to create a new channel, type the name, click OK, and then select it three times, click it three times so that everything is selected and press the equal sign. This will turn the bottom bar into a formula and you can just type the name of the channel that you want to copy and press enter. If your channel names are short, that's a great way to do it. If you have longer channel names, you can just use the database tool, channel tool, copy a channel. This lets you pick the longer channel names from a drop down menu. So let's display these two profiles, these two channels as profiles. And let's say we have some spikes and we want to start cleaning up the spikes in the data. <clears throat> We're going to zoom in on the spikes that we see, for example. And, you know, you're going to highlight the portion of the data you want to get rid of and then press the space bar to delete it. But oh no, our cursor was actually in the altitude edit channel, which means the data we deleted was the altitude, not the mag. I make this mistake more often than I should probably admit, but it's a pretty easy fix. If you right click on the channel name and use the channel maker, that copy channel, you can just reapply the last tool and the same settings that were used on that channel. Now let's say you're on the right channel, but you've deleted a bigger portion of data than you meant to, whatever the mistake may be. If we display the original May, you can sort of compare what you deleted to the original data. And I can see, you know what, on second thought, that's too much. Let's go back and try to put back some of the original data. You can highlight just the portion you want to copy back. And in the database, press that equal sign until you get that formula down at the bottom and then press enter. And you can see that what you're actually doing here is you're restoring the original mag channel just on the portions that you've highlighted. So you're just highlighting it, pressing equal, and then enter. The last thing I want to show you is this discard database changes. So this is sort of a last resort. If you can't undo your changes any other way, you can discard all the changes since your last save. I call this a last resort because if you don't remember when your last save was, you could potentially be losing a lot of work that you've just done. So make sure you save. And then if we make a change here, like just copy back all the original data and then we hit discard, it will go back to the same state it was when we last hit save. So if you need to use discard, obviously knowing the last time you save is going to be really important. So what you can do is actually change the frequency of the auto save function. So if you go into settings, advanced global settings, 
there's an option on the first dialog, which is the auto save time. Now, it'll be by default be set to 30 minutes. That means that every 30 minutes you're going to get a prompt that asks you if you want to save. You can switch this to something more frequent, like 15 minutes or even every 10 minutes. Now to some, um, especially the more advanced users, this might just be a really big annoyance. But for others, like beginners, um, I think that this is really just the reassurance you need. Because if you do have to use discard database changes, all you're discarding is 10 or 15 minutes of work instead of 30 minutes or an hour, which in the long run is actually going to save you some time. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me directly or our support team at support at